Hello, my name is Leandra McKenna and I'm the Project Lead in Community Restorative Justice Ireland for the STARS project. STARS stands for Striving to Achieve a Restorative Society. This is a joint project with ourselves and our partners in Northern Ireland Alternatives. We successfully tendered for the STARS project funding from the Executive Office and Cooperation Ireland. The aim of this project is to expand restorative practices in non-justice settings across the north of Ireland in the eight set areas with SIT, sit standing for Communities in Transition. CRJ is responsible for the delivery of the whole project but with a particular focus on West and North Belfast, Lurgan, Craigavon and Derry. Northern Ireland alternatives areas are East Belfast, North Down, The Schenkel, Lauren and Carrick. The STARS project provides free restorative training to the community and statutory workers, as well as supporting their personal and professional development. This program also offers a range of accredited training with one-to-one -one mentoring support throughout to support individuals on their restorative journey. As well as expanding our participants' knowledge of restorative practice, a further aim is to develop how it can be applied practically to their work and to their lives. Restorative justice and practices are methods used to deal with conflict and repair harm in a peaceful way while building or preserving relationships. The reason I'm here today is to interview some of our mentors and volunteers involved with the STARS project this is to coincide with International Restorative Justice Week as we want to promote our work in this field. Hello Michael, um, it's great to see you again. For those who don't know you, could you tell us a wee bit about yourself please? Yes of course, uh, my name is Michael O'Hara and I'm on the Board of Directors of Community Restorative Justice Ireland. I'm also a mentor for the STARS project. Currently I live in West Belfast and over the last 10 years on and off I've been involved in CRJI in some shape or form. So Michael, can you tell us what restorative practices actually means? Well essentially restorative justice is a process of restoring good relations where there has been conflict, harm or wrongdoing. It's a mechanism where both the victim and the wrongdoer can participate and work together on a voluntary basis so that they can actively develop and agree a way forward in a safe and equal environment. Okay Michael, can you tell us a bit about the STARS programme please? Well, first of all STARS stands for Striving to Achieve a Restorative Society. This is carried out in a non-justice setting and seeks to build capacity of individuals and groups to effect positive change in the community through raising awareness of the benefits of restorative methodologies. Okay, that's great Michael. So now can you tell us a bit about your mentoring role and what it actually involves? Basically my role is to promote awareness of restorative practices and restorative justice, but it's also to encourage participation and facilitate training. It also involves developing and monitoring the STARS personal development plan, which is a structured support and shared learning plan. Another part of my role is coordinating with the project lead. I also attend bi-monthly meetings with the other mentors from CRJI and Northern Ireland Alternatives. Hi Michael, um, it's great to see you again. For those who don't know you, could you tell us a wee bit about yourself please? Yes of course, my name is Michael George. I work for Community Restorative Justice Ireland and I'm part of the STARS project. Over the last 30 years, I've been involved in community work and helping people in my local area. I'm a father of four and I've lived in the Colin area of Belfast for most of my adult life. Can you tell me some of the benefits of using a restorative approach? Well, one of the major benefits of using a restorative approach is that it gives everyone involved the chance to tell their stories. This way, they're able to get what's bothering them off their chest and hopefully leads to an agreement where the needs of all the parties involved are met. This approach can also avoid going down the road of the criminal justice system, which sometimes doesn't meet the needs of the victim and usually leads them back to us. Okay, Michael, what is a common misconception about restorative justice? 
Well, first of all, most people think it is the easy or soft option, which I can assure you it is not. In the numerous cases that I have worked on with a victim and an offender coming together, they have always stated afterwards that the process was tough but beneficial. Another misconception is that the process is easier on the offender, but in my experience, I have found the opposite. The reason for this is that the offender has to explain why they done what they did and to apologise for their wrongdoing. Another tough aspect for the offender is that they have to listen to the victim and the impact the incident had on their lives. Sometimes this can be an overwhelming experience, but with the support provided by our facilitators, the atmosphere can be diffused. Where do you see restorative work in the future? I believe the restorative approach should be part of all statutory sector training. The benefits of these agencies working in a restorative way could resolve anything from workplace disputes to low-level criminal activity without people receiving a criminal or disciplinary record. Hello Fiona, um, it's great to see you again. For those who don't know you, would you like to tell us a wee bit about yourself please? Hi, I'm Fiona Hart and I work as a mentor for the Community Restorative Justice STARS programme in Lurgan and Kergavan. My previous work experience has always been people focused and I've worked in the field of addictions, community development and the rehabilitation of offenders. Um, my first role in CORJ was back in 2016 when I worked as a project coordinator in URI in South Armagh. In relation to the STARS project and community restorative justice, what training have you undertook? I have qualifications relating to my previous roles, such as an OCN and restorative practices, as well as qualifications in harm reduction, addictions, rehabilitation in the community, community development and various other training sessions. As STARS aims to introduce restorative practices into society, it has allowed me to source and assist training in my local community the most recent being courses in mental health and media skills. As a STARS mentor, I have also devised personal development plans tailored uniquely to individuals' needs and set in upon OCN Level 3, understanding the theories of restorative practice. Can you tell us about the challenges of working restoratively? I started working on this project back in March, just as COVID hit and we were placed in lockdown. This was the first time Lard Minker Gavin ever had a restorative programme, so it was a new concept for everyone in the local area. Not only were we faced with the challenge of lockdown, but also trying to promote a brand new project in the area. However, the COVID situation did present new opportunities to help my community by delivering food parcels and supporting the most vulnerable in society. In relation to STARS, we face the challenge of getting different groups and organisations to buy into a concept they knew very little about. So in order to disseminate information, we delivered question and answer sessions and brought speakers in, as well as providing real life examples of casework and how restorative justice works in practice.